Hi everyone, thank you. This so meeting is being recorded. Thank you so much for joining our event today, uh, which is part of Matthew Algie's celebration of 25 years since uh, we bought the first fair trade espresso to the UK. Firstly, some housekeeping. So this webinar is being recorded. Um, we'll basically have the first um, panel discussion where we'll ask some questions for our panelists and then we'll have some time for questions and answers. So if you have questions that, um, that spring to mind during the initial part, it would be great if you could pop those in the Q&A chat as we go. Uh, to firstly introduce myself as well, I'm Amy Oroko, I'm Sustainability Manager here at Matthew Algae. Um, our sustainability team is responsible for our sourcing approach um, in terms of sustainability uh, within coffee and also the other products that we source. Um, we also look after our ambition to reduce our environmental imp impact here in the UK uh, and also to engage with our community. So yes, back in 1997, Matthew Algae launched our Tiki blend, which was the UK's first fair trade certified espresso. And since then, our commitment to buying certified coffee has grown and grown. So after the uh, over the last 25 years, Matthew Algae has actually generated nearly £7 million in fair trade premium for coffee growing farmers around the world. Um, but yeah, this afternoon, rather than reflecting on, on the past, we're going to be looking at discussing the future of coffee and we'll look at why our commitment to fair trade is an, as important today as it was 25 years ago. Um, the two themes that we're particularly going to be touching upon are the challenge of engaging the next generation of coffee farmers and also how climate change is impacting coffee. Uh, these two themes are often intertwined. Over 60% of Brits aren't actually aware that coffee yields look to set to further decline over the next three decades due to the effects of climate change. Farmers are actually often facing less predictable weather patterns, whether that's rainfall or temperatures, which often has a direct impact on coffee harvests or indirectly through, for example, the prevalence of pests and disease within their coffee farms. And younger farmers can often be put off by the uncertainty that this brings. And um, today we'll be discussing these intertwined topics with two young people who are involved in coffee themselves in Latin America, and also considering how fair trade helps them to support cooperatives to tackle these challenges. So I'm delighted to welcome Marina and Paolo to the webinar. Marina is the sales supervisor for Coop Bam, a cooperative in Brazil. She'll be telling us a bit about her cooperative and the work that she does there with them, and particularly about um, how her cooperative supports um, young people getting into coffee and obviously their work on sustainable agriculture and climate change. Paolo is also joining us. Um, he works for the CLAC, which is a fair trade producer network and he is their coffee expert. So Paolo is, um, he has a coffee growing background, which we'll hear a bit more about. And he's a great example of a young person with a passion for coffee. Paolo will be sharing his experience of supporting producers and um, also with the impacts of climate change. So hopefully that's given you a little bit of an introduction to what we'll be talking to you about. Um, Firstly, could we start with um, Marina? Could you tell us a bit more about how you and your organisation have experienced some of these specific challenges around climate change and engaging young people? Hello, Amy. Many thanks for the invite to participate of this panel. Um, I'm very happy to represent the COP fund here and to try to, to help with some information to um, get this, this panel um, super uh, interesting for us and the uh, discussion. So um, uh, as you told, um, I'm working with the, the sellers to export, but we are very involved with all uh, the, the departments and the people of the, co the cooperative. And um, we are so glad to, to have some support um, as Paul is here with us from the CLAC and the fair trade, we uh, give uh, try to 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 help the the, the coops, the the farmers to um, take care about the production. But uh, I think the point that is super important that the, the proposal of the cooperative is um, produce the coffee, use the coffee as a way to um, get best best conditions. Uh, even to the the members, but even to our uh, our 
our planet, uh, uh, the place that we are living and use the, the land to, to, to produce. So uh, with the fair trade support and with some activities of the cooperative, we give support to, to producers with the production, with the area, with um, uh, questions about water, questions about the land, um, about the to to plant some trees to 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 protect the the the, the, the coffee trees and um, with some projects projects the, that they they are discussing about the the future and the the weather situation the climate and uh, I know that the, this there are very uh, a lot of discussions with the the members with the certificate and. Um, with some partners uh, about all of this, this, this point and this, this discussion. Brazil had quite bad frost, didn't it, last, um, last season, wasn't it? Is that something that you guys experienced? How did it, how did it affect your, your group and your coffee? Yeah, fire us. Uh, it was a um, difficult time and difficult um, and challenge harvest this year because we were expecting a, a, a best production um, with a, a, a long number. And then we have a, a, a different number of our forecast. So we were expecting, for example, um, our number that we're thinking about to, to produce was uh, 100,000 bags. And then when the, the producers start to, to pass to us the information about the production, we update to 60,000 uh, and then we receive uh, almost 40,000 40, bags. So um, we, we have a loss in our volume and then a lot of producers uh, lose the production. And sometimes as we are talking about the familiar producers, they have just that coffee plants to to, to take care about the, the house, to, to, to have money, to take care about the family and uh, other things and take care of the property too. So um, it was a, a, a very challenging uh, crop for us. And then uh, we had to, to have a contact with other um, partners to get more information and then to, to try to, to keep our, our uh, operation uh, working mm -hmm. yeah uh, and what about if like why do you think we're talking about um young people as a topic why is it a challenge um thinking about engaging young people in coffee so i'm coming back to you again marina <laughs> so um um i think that the for us uh it's important to to give the young people um participating and engaging with all the, the, the activities in the cooperative. And we believe that these young people will be the, the person that we keep our, our job, our purpose, our history. So then um, we have a group uh, that the, the social environment uh, department take care about the projects and activities to them. And I think the other point, uh, even the projects, uh, for example, to learn about um, other kind of productions in the property. Uh, I think the point is show to them that uh, keep in the land producing coffee is a very nice opportunity to open mind and note that the coffee is a universe and propose a, a lot of possibilities to learn, to to um, improve the land uh, with coffee, talking about quality, talking about the environmental stuff and whatever, uh, whatever is important to, to keep the production, but the, the people here and still working and to guarantee a, a, a nice future to, to the next generation. So we have these projects to show them uh, about this universe. Uh, show about the barista uh, subjects, um, about machines, methods. Um, they can learn learning about, as I said, uh, about these other productions to improve the land. 
um, they can learn about the roasting and ground process. Everything's evolved about this um, coffee world. Uh, they are open to, to bring these demands and develop activities and projects to give them um, as uh, how, how much is possible and the, the most possible information to them to, to keep with us, to keep with the family and keep the land and uh, keeping the coffee production. Fantastic. Yeah, I think hopefully we'll have plenty of time to chat a bit more about what you're doing to engage young people, which is really exciting. Um, uh, thanks for giving us a flavour of that already. Um, Paolo, just to dig into this um, topic a bit more, is that, are these challenges around climate change and young people something that you see reflected more broadly in the region? So a, a kind of that regional perspective that you've got. First of all, thanks for the, the opportunity to be here, sharing a little bit about our experience and our histories with you. It's um, amazing to be here. And regarding the climate change right now, uh, we see that this is the biggest challenge for the agriculture in general, not only for coffee. So we, we are seeing a lot of uh, troubles or challenges that the producers are facing because that, as we said here in Brazil, we had uh, the frost, we had a lot of rains uh, in more stronger uh, storms and rains that are damaged the, the crops. And also included in Central America, for example, we are having a lot of rains, uh, more than usual, and it has damaged a lot the production there. For example, in Central America right now, the producers has much coffee to be cropped, but they got delayed the crop, the beginning of the crop because the rains that was not supposed to be in that time too much rain. So right now they are facing another challenge because of this delay, because they do not have enough labor to crop all the cherries, the ripe cherries at the same time, and they do not have structure to do that. So the climate change is affecting the whole world already. It's already a problem for the producers. They are already facing also uh, losing some production and seeing the cost of production increase because they have to take other actions to, to avoid this problem or to get it lower. And this means cost to them. So they are getting less production in a higher cost many times when they crop something. And many times they, they lose the whole production. So it has been a big challenge for every producers all over the world. In some countries, we are seeing that is damaging a lot the, the crops and, and the situations for the, for the producers. So I think that is the biggest challenge. Regarding the next generation, uh, we have a lot of opportunities. It's a challenge also because culturally, many producers were not willing that their sons stayed in the field. It was much common here in Brazil and also in other countries. We can see many fathers incentivating their sons to leave, to study and to work in another thing. Uh, but we can see when the, the young decide to, to stay in the field and when they decide to take part of the, the coffee farm and they start to see the coffee farm as a business, they start to develop that. So uh, they start to develop the way they produce, the quality, the management in general. And, and in general, the new generations, our generations, I could say, uh, we are really willing to discover the world, new ideas, new knowledge. Everyone wants to discover the world, let's say. And the younger farmers also. So I think that they can see sometimes that the coffee can be a door to discover the world. And when they start to see in this way, they start to develop and how we may do it better. And because of this willing in general, they are more open to exchange knowledge with consumers, for example, with other players in the supply chain. And that brings a lot of development to the supply chain. And we can see a lot of young people working on specialty coffee or on organic coffee 
and bringing, bringing to the farms a more sustainable way to produce coffee many times, a better management many times, because culturally, the fathers were working the same way for 30 years. And right now, they many times they cannot see uh, the other opportunities and the young people can bring that to, to them. Uh, so that helps a lot in the development and including to practices that can mitigate the climate change problems. And many young farmers are studying about that and looking for how they can keep producing coffee for the next 25, for the next 30 years, because they their fathers were producing for the last 30 years, but how the young people can keep. So I can see a lot of young producers already looking for these, uh, these practices. Fantastic. It was really interesting to see or uh, to hear you explain kind of the intersection between these themes we're talking about and maybe some of the economic challenges as well. Um, yeah, and talking about the opportunities, everything that young people can bring to the industry is really, really positive as well. Um, Marina, obviously part of what, why we're here talking today is because of the celebration of 25 years of fair trade. It would be great if you could tell us a bit about how your cooperative has been involved with fair trade, how long you've been fair trade certified and things, um, that would be really helpful. Uh, so, um, congratulations <laughs> to this anniversary. And it's for us, it's super nice to, to be involved because um, COPFA, it was uh, the first uh, organization to get the Fair Trade Certificate in Brazil. And our certified was in 1998. So, um, since this certified, uh, we can see in, in, in have a, a cooperation in the beginning of the cooperative, uh, we have a, a, a big development and we can see that uh, uh, through the fair trade, uh, through the support that we have, uh, we can access um, new possibilities around the world. Um, we can have access and we have this, this uh, free opportunity to have a conversation and, and doing a connection about the producer's demand and what the, the um, importers, what the, the roasters uh, are asking about the, the, the coffee, uh, talking about sustainability, sustain, sustain, sustainable, sorry, and talking about the human rights, talking about um, every single point that involvement uh, when you think more uh, deeply uh, about the, the, the coffee production, think about the people. So I think for us, it's a, a, a very pleasure to, to be the first cooperative in Brazil to get the certification. And uh, we still are together in this project. And as I, I told you in the, the beginning of the meeting, it's a very nice uh, coincidence because we are in Belo Horizonte today to the International Coffee Week and we are together with the, the fair trade in Instagram to, to show to, to the people about the, what is the certificate. Uh, to people think about um, how is, how is um, benefic to, to, to the both, to the consumers, to the producers have a, a certificate uh, as fair trade. So it's a, as I say, it's a very nice uh, coincidence. We are super happy to, to be in this uh, um, and um, I think to, to keep the, the work to the future and when we, we talk about this young people with us in the next generation and involve the certificate about this point is um, a, a very nice opportunity to the young people uh, understand how they can um, keep the working and as Paul say, uh, to think more about how it's possible to, to produce better mm -hmm. and think all about the, um, uh, every single point that is important to, to the producer, as I said. So I think through the certificate with fair trade and think about all these years that, that we are together in this project, I think it's a, a, a fair way to, to the future. 
Fantastic. Yeah, it's great to be connected with you, with your own, um, the pride that comes through from your own cooperative, being able to claim that first as well. So um, really excellent. I guess um, it'd be great to hear a bit about you both personally as well. So Paolo, could you tell us um, a bit about your personal career journey and why you, you've ended up working for the CLAC? Yeah. Yeah, as I am in Brazil, in Minas Gerais, uh, it's the main coffee region in Brazil, in the world, I think. So I always worked in coffee. My father, my grandfather always worked in, in the coffee production. And I started to work as coffee producer together with my father. And in the past, as I said before, I have heard from my father, oh, he stood, do something, do other things, because coffee is not for you. It's a hard work. It's something that do not work. And I grew up with this in my mind many times. So when I get out the college, I was thinking to study mechanical engineer, something like that, to work in another area. But I, fortunately, I would say, I couldn't enter in the university for the, the engineer, the mechanical engineer. And I decided to stay two more years working in coffee. And then I met the cooperative, the fair trade cooperative from my city, that is Copfa. And I could see that something could be done differently. So I could see that the coffee could be an interesting business for me. So then I decided to study more about that. So I decided to study in the university coffee technology, that is my degree. And then I started to study also sustainable production of coffee and specialty coffee production because uh, in my region were the conventional large scale production. We are small producers, but always thinking how to increase uh, the number of bags. Uh, they didn't think about the sustainable in the past. So I could see in the fair trade a different way and start to think the things a little bit different. And I could have access to a lot of information through the cooperative, through the fair trade, and also through my studies. And then I could see, no, oh, if we work in this way, uh, it can be a nice work, can be a business, can be my own company. I can be an entrepreneur in the coffee. So my brother and I, that my brother is two years younger than me, we decided to study coffee and start to work and to improve our production. So we became members of the cooperative as fair trade producers. And then we decided, no, let's do organic because it's a nice way to produce coffee and we can have a better production in better quality and sell the coffee for a price more, for a fair price. So we decided to move to this and then we, we start to see the results. And in the past, we were about to sell the land, to sell the farm, my father, and then when we started to do the fair trade with the support of the fair trade and, and start to work in, in this different way, we could keep the land. And right now we are increasing our production. But like 10 years after that, 10, 12 years after that. But right now we are increasing the production, increasing our land. So that's, it's a really nice result that we get, we got as producer myself. And after that, I decided, no, I, I have to show that to other people. So I had the opportunity to work for the cooperative as commercial manager for 80 years. So in this time, we could bring a lot of other producers because when we started in the coop, the cooperative had 200 members. Right now, I think we have 600 almost. So we bring more producers to show to all of them these results and they are getting these results right now. And after these eight years working in the COP, I decided to move to Plaque. Well, I can show my example to many more producers and show them the impact that fair trade can bring to their farms, to their uh, production and improve their quality of life. Because we are, when we talk about climate change, about next generation, about everything, we are talking about uh, quality of life. So. I want to show that to as many people I can. So I decided to move to CLAC to try to do this and try to do this here today too. <laughs> 
Fantastic. Yeah, your passion really comes across. And it's so lovely to hear like your own personal testimony. Um, Marina, what about for you? What what opportunities has working with fair trade brought to you as a young young person? Um, so um, I started at Kopfa for um, four years ago, and then I started in other area. It was a financial area. Then um, I moved to commercial, but to work with the roast and ground coffees products, we have a, a, a line of products to, to internal market. And then I start since the beginning, uh, I, I always uh, learning about, um, about all of these points that we're talking about today and see uh, with the, the producers, because I, I think that we can have this opportunity to to, to learn uh, through the, the producers, through the colleagues, uh, as Paulo was uh, working with us and we have the, the opportunity to, to work together. And then when Paulo left to, to CLAC, I, I came to, to doing this position to, the, the sell, to, to sell coffee to exportation. And then as, as I, I said in, in the beginning, uh, for me, it was a very nice experience to develop myself, uh, talk about the professional, but uh, personal too, because I believe that the coffee is a way to get connections with other people. And for me, it's, uh, uh, it, it's, it's I, I can't explain my, my feelings because when I can talk with other people from our job, from... Um, our producers and uh, what is wonderful to 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 bring to them the the product the final product the coffee that is um, producing with uh, a lot of respect with um, people with um, the environmental um, um, and uh, for me I think it's the the best point it's the best uh, opportunity and today I'm super glad and happy uh, to do what I, I am do. And we know that's uh, a lot to learn yet. That's why it's, um, I think that it's, uh, it's a passion for me to keep learning. So, and, we, and it's not just about coffee. Uh, fair trade, I think we have um, more than the coffee. Okay, the quality is important, um, the environmental, the, the coffee trees, but we have the people and we have uh, all of these things together. In, in, in this um, in, in, in this process of production, but we have uh, uh, this possibility to to learn uh, a lot uh, always. So I'm very 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 happy to 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 be here and have this possibility and this opportunity. Yeah, there's something I really love about my job as well as having that opportunity with connect to connect with people um, around the world who are just as uh, passionate about coffee. Um, yeah, I guess um, you talked a little bit at the start, Marina, about um, your projects that are looking to engage young people. Um, it'd be great to hear any more about that if you've got more details to share. Also, anything you're, you're doing particularly focusing on climate change adaptation, so how you're helping members with that. Um, um, so, um... The, the projects with the young people working through the department and the, the, the group of young people, their uh, sons and daughters of our um, members. And we have partnerships with other institutions uh, as schools, um, universities, and they can um, develop these projects. And we are always try to, to, to get connected uh, what do we have to do? Uh, think about a cooperative. Think about uh, that we have we have the the fair trade certificate. So we have uh, four um, divides to uh, subject divides. So the young people and the cooperative are still together thinking about this development, this this uh, this project, and then um, as as I said, they can know about the production as well, uh, because we have uh, some analysis, for example, for waters, 
for water, for the land. So they are involved with everything that is doing in the cooperative, talking about the technical support. So they, they check about what is going on in the, in the property. So as, as, we, as we know about the frost last year, so we have uh, uh, people checking about and thinking about what we can do. And uh, the young people have access to these activities and they can, uh, as, as I know, uh, they have a project to, to plant some trees to protecting the, the coffee plants, but think about uh, weather, think about the, the quality of the, the property, think about, uh, as I say, water as uh, uh, the land, the, the soil, because we have to think about what we need to, to keep the, the, the weather um, working in our favor. Uh, working in our favor, talk about the production and talk about, as Paul would say, about the, the quality of life. Because um, in the end of the, the point, I think that the, the quality of the people is, uh, is involved, I think is, is the, the discussion. So uh, these young people are always together and connected with the cooperative, with activities, with discussions, with curse, with um, every demand that, that they have and every demand that the other cops have too. Uh, we are connected with the, this development this, and these um, projects that we are uh, doing. And when they understand in, the, in, the, in a coffee shop, for example, uh, about the quality, and when they say that sometimes a quality coffee, uh, as an example in our cooperative, there's a, a very sustainable and natural produce, and, they, and this producer, they uh, he has a, a very high quality. So I think we can involve the young people. And when they, they see this example, they think that's a way, as Paul say, said, there's a way to, to do the, the best, the best uh, production and the best uh, development for them. So I believe that uh, with the projects, with this uh, involvement with all the people in the cooperative, I think that it, what we are doing to, to think about the, the, the clima um, subjects and uh, the next generation uh, keeping working with us. Fantastic. It would be great to hear from you as well, Paolo, about how the CLAC um, supports groups like Marina's group on those two issues, so on adaptation and on or mitigation and on the next generation as well. In CLAC, we have a lot of actions to, to support the organizations of small producers organizations in these teams. Uh, right now, we have a lot of projects running all over the countries from Latin America, but for, for the next generations, we have a really nice example that we had in some countries, the leadership school that's focused on young people, where we do training to the young people to develop their leadership skills. Also, uh, trainings about uh, coffee quality, cupping, barismo, all the things involved in the supply chain. Today, so they can have this information on the whole supply chain, and they can start to think how we may improve our production, how we may do it better. And when they have a leadership skills, and when they have some management skills and also this information about the market, they can uh, become uh, voices for the, the other farmers and by their example, develop the production in, in the whole, uh, as a whole. Uh, it, that's a really nice example that we have in, in some countries, supporting these, these small farmers uh, focus and including this leadership school, we have, climate change uh, actions that they can take and they can uh, become like uh, advocates uh, on it. So in, in their families, in their communities, and mainly in their organizations. The main focus is bring young people uh, 
to the organizations to become leaders in the future and drive the coffee culture for a better way to produce for a more sustainable way and avoid all these problems that we have. And also we have a lot of other trainings about climate change, about best practices in terms of process, in terms of productions. Right now we had in Brazil uh, a training for, for the SPOs, for the organizations, uh, about produce uh, biological fertilizers to produce uh, organic fertilizers to, to the technicals, to the agronomists, to spread these to the producers and bring this best practice to, the, to them. So that's are the main points that we are working on it, but we have a lot of, a lot of projects right now running. So we support a lot. And also in connections right now, uh, supporting the SPOs and producers in events, in coffee events, in coffee shows, bring them information from the marketing, from the consumer side, and also bring to the consumer side information from producers to, to develop the whole supply chain as a, as a entire, not only one, not only producer side, not only consumer side. I believe that we have to develop all at the same time to, to get a better supply chain and a better world. Mm, fantastic. Yeah, that's something we really benefit from actually as a business working with fair trade here as well as um, helping to join up the dots from origin to here. Obviously we have good relationships with our suppliers, but um, there's often like an extra layer of information that fair trade can help um, to provide to us. Um, and it's really important for us to be able to play that role as well, to share as much information as possible. Um, great, well, thank you so much. Um, I think it'd be great to move on to the questions that we've got from attendees. So we've got enough time to make sure we cover all the questions from people who've joined online. Uh, my colleague, Eduarda, is gonna join us for this section. So okay. To facilitate. Hi, Eduardo. Hi, hello, everybody. <laughs> Any um, questions? I do. I have a couple of questions, and I've been told that perhaps those attending may not be able to see the questions that are being uh, logged in by anyone who's registered as anonymous, but we will make sure that we read them out as well, so in case you don't see the question written down. So I have a question here from Estelle McGill, and um, she's asking from for buyers, coffee buyers, whether they are from roasters, retailers, or consumers, from your perspective, from your point of view, why is it so important for you that buyers buy fair trade certified coffee? What is it for you the main benefits, from your perspective, um, that farmers receive uh, through fair trade, and why are they so important? Mm, fantastic. Um, Marina, I don't know if you want to take that one. What would be your sales pitch to buyers about why they should buy fair trade? <laughs> I believe there is um, a connection very strong to subjects and purpose um, because when a buyer, a roaster or importer, uh, I think there is a strong reason to believe in fair trade certification because uh, I believe that we have a respect with um, the production uh, as we are discussing during the, the meeting and i think there is a way to as paulo said to be fair to the both sides to the producer to the roasters to consumers and to our world uh, so i believe that there's a, a a way to to view and believe that the certificate will be good for uh, every single person that is uh, an actor in this uh, supply chain Mm, great. Paolo, do you have anything to add on that? What would be your, your sales pitch for fair trade to buy yeah. here? Yeah, I think uh, why is it important to have people buying fair trade? I, I would say that it's important that people has awareness or conscious about what they are buying. So the most powerful act that we have, I think, is buying something because we are paying for everything that is behind of this product. If we are paying for a product that we don't know where, the, where it comes or how it is produced, we may pay for bad things. And when we choose to buy a fair trade product, we are 
choosing uh, to to finance everything that is behind that. So we are talking here about the next generation, the climate change mitigations, and all the projects that we run. So when when we buy, we are choosing to support all these projects behind that, and we are sure that we are contributing to build a better quality of life, a better world to everybody, not only for the producers, but also for the consumers, because uh, we as producers, we also are consumers. So we need to think how we buy the things to keep our world in the future for the next generations and for the, the next and next generations. So I believe that the main point here is uh, it's important because in fair trade, we have the, the transparency and we have build it out the relationship and we take care about all these things uh, and we support the producers and also we are here to support also the consumers uh, in building this this better world so i think the action of buy something it's the most powerful one that we have so the only thing i would say is think about what is behind you are buying Mm -hmm. and you see that fair trade is the best option <laughs> yeah that's so powerful powerful message for all of us consumers um eduardo have you got another question for i do i have several actually there's one here who from a, a viewer listener who obviously found your experience paula of building your own coffee business really interesting and the way you described it it, you, we're not looking at you just as a farmer or a, a, a coffee producer, but the view is asking how important is it that we all view producers as entrepreneurs and business partners? I think that's it's really important for, for the producers because many times when, when we are seen uh, only as producers, uh, don't only doing the hard work we do not think about the risks that we are taking uh, not only talking about the financial or environmental risks or uh, every risk that we have in the coffee productions but when we start to see it as uh, entrepreneurs and how we make partnership with the producers with coffee producers to bring better a better world to bring a better supply chain we start to think out how we may support them uh, in, in different ways. Uh, what will be the tools that we may use to, to build all this? So I think that we start not only seeing the producers as a victim, but as a partner to build the supply chain and to build all these things that we need to build for climate change, for next generations and everything. So we start to see how we may work together and not how I may help you. I think that's the main point, how we may work together and know how I may help you. We all are helping each other. So we are partnering and we need to work together to build this. So I think that's the main point. When we start to see as an entrepreneur, as a company, I think it's easier to see we may work together or not, I need help here. So I think that's my view. Yeah, that's really powerfully explained. Thanks. Mar Marina, have you got anything to add to that? Like from your experience, treating producers, obviously, as the entrepreneurs as they are? Um, I think I agree uh, with the, the Paolo's view. Um, I think it's very important uh, when we can um, show this, this point to other producers as the, the Paulo papers with Clark and Fairtrade today, and to, 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 to bring to the producers and the, the consensus that they, they are a, a very important actor in, 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 this, in this chain. In, in, and I, I believe that they, all, all of the processes try to start with, with them. So I, I agree with everything that um, with all of the, the Paulo's discourse and um, I'm super, su super glad to, to, to hear more about the, his uh, history and uh, experience. Thank you. Eduardo, I question. have another question here. 
So um, there was mention of connecting with schools and universities in, a, in attempts to trying to educate young people and sharing the opportunities that a career in coffee can offer. Could you tell me a little bit, if you both have experience of this, how is this being received? And are you trying to, have you been successful in capturing young people who don't have a history in coffee, whose father or mother or grandfather haven't had um, a history of coffee or haven't worked in coffee for generations? Are you trying, are, are you managing to get um, young people without a history, a family history in coffee to come into coffee for the first time? Mm. Marina, do you want to go first? I can. Um, I think you, I am an example because uh, I, I came, my family, uh, my daughter, and uh, I'm sorry, my father and my mother, we, uh, we never worked directly with coffee, just some, um, one of the family, but very distant. So the coffee for us in the beginning was um, a drink in the, the breakfast, it was very different uh, of today. So then um, I started to work with coffee, uh, um, even now with Kopfa, and then I'm a, a coffee lover. So, and I, 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 I'm super glad to, to be involved with, as I say, with not just to, to sell coffee. Okay, I have this experience with this uh, clients and customers, but I have the possibility to, to learn with a producer too. And uh, in Kopfa, uh, we have these partnerships with the young people, uh, son and daughters of producers, but we involve the schools too, because I think it's a possibility to show more about the, the Kopfa, about the certificate and about coffee too, because, okay, we, have, we are in the, uh, a region that is very strong in, in coffee produce, production, but uh, as Paul said, sometimes we, we were um, motivated to our family to, to go and study and do some things uh, away of our origin. And then I think it's a, a, a very nice opportunity to show that we have um, uh, a, a, a good opportunity to, to keep in our origin, our city. We, we are from a very small city and the coffee is what, um, moving the, the city. So it's very, it's very important to us to have this paper to show more about the coffee and to, to our people from, from the coffee farm, from the cooperative and to the other schools uh, in the city and around the city and schools uh, to, the com to the community with uh, other pro social projects that we have. So I think it's a way to, bring the eyes of the, the people in our city, in the region, to, to the coffee. But uh, with all these points that we are talking about today, behind the coffee, showing about people, show about everything uh, that we are talking about today. Yes, and Paolo, do you want to share your experiences as well? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think that this point, it's not only for the sound of producers, not only for the fair trade producers are wet, it's for the whole community, all the benefits that we bring. One nice example that I, I would take here, for example, in Europe, I know that there is a lot of fair trade universities. And here in Brazil, we also have some fair trade universities, fair trade cities. And when we can see a lot of students, for example, we have in Brazil, UFLA or other universities that has a lot of inter uh, exchange of information with fair trade cooperatives. For example, the, the, the university that I studied had a lot of exchange with Copfan, with Cocaminas, other fair trade cooperatives in Brazil, a lot of fair trade cooperatives in Brazil. And I started to see more about sustainability and I could see that they were one of the few universities that talked about sustainability in their classes of agronomists and everything, because in Brazil in general, they didn't talk about that in the past. Only the universities that had this contact, the fair trade universities or that the ones that had this bigger contact with the fair trade co-ops. And I could see a lot of people that came, for example, from beans, from corn to study agronomy, 
and start to see about the coffee and start to see about fair trade coffee production or organic coffee production, for example. And then they decided, oh, I, I want to do that too. I, I will try to do that. So, for example, in Poço Fundo, that's our city, we have some uh, producers right now that, for example, were from Sao Paulo or Campinas that are big cities here that moved to the field, rented a land from a big farm. In, in Brazil, it's common, a big farm rented the land to small producers. And they rented this land and are starting to produce fair trade coffee. So we are bringing more producers and also distributing the land in, in for more people to, to have these benefits. And, and I can see a lot of, there is a lot of examples about that in Copfa, for example, I, I know three or four producers like that. <laughs> Great, so useful to hear those. Um, Eduardo, do we have another question? We do, and I have an interesting one here. So it's from James, and he wants to know, how do you how do you think that cooperatives can motivate young people to get involved in the decision-making of their organization as leaders or as part of the board? And for example, you know, either of you or both of you, how does CLAC in particular would support this process and how does um, COPFAM would support this process? Mm. Great. Um, yeah, Paolo, do you want to start talking about CLAC? Yeah. Yeah, I, that's, that's a really interesting question. Uh, I think that's really important to, to motivate the, the young to be part of the board of the COPs, to take the leadership holes in the cooperatives, to help to drive us uh, to a different way to produce coffee and also to manage sometimes to trade coffee. And I have seen a lot of nice examples uh, of young directors in some cooperatives that bring new ideas, bring new projects to the COPs and they develop it a lot. One way to incentivate them to be part of this it's showing that it's not, it's a difficult work, a challenging work, but it's a not a hard work that you need. To. So you have to be prepared. You have to, you must have information and you need uh, to be open to help uh, others. So we always try to show them the importance of the organization. So look how the organizations were important to your father, to your family, to your community. So we need to keep them uh, for the future too, as we are trying to keep you in the fields to keep the farm, the cost production. We also need to keep the organizations and the cooperatives to help you in the supply chain, all the actors. So it's showing them this importance, talking to them about this importance that they are willing to be part. And I think that many young people from our generations and the next ones, I think they are willing to, many of them are willing to take big challenges. So they are willing to be part and to give their contribution because many times their fathers were the founders of the COPs, uh, were the founders even of the fair trade systems as, as a whole. Uh, right now we are in these transitions of generations from the the ones that started the fair trade system that started cooperatives and the next one. And they could see all the fight that their fathers, that their parents uh, struggled during the, the years. And right now they are willing, uh, many of them are willing to, to take their chance and to make their history in this, in this system. So I think that's showing this, this importance to them. And in the leadership school, we, we try to show this to, to all the young people. Actually, there's a question that relates to what you just said that I would like to um, maybe pose to Marina. So it says here earlier, we had a discussion, a panel discussion. It was focusing on the role of women in coffee. And I was going to ask, so Marina, do you feel that there's an equal number of young females being involved and having positions of leadership and having access to information, having access to leadership skills. Um, do you think you're given the same opportunities to have a voice uh, um, as m men do? Very interesting question. Um, if we have a, a, a look 
uh, in the in the coffee production and the coffee players. In the most part of them, we know there is a not very equal number when you talk about women. But um, I feel that we have uh, a movement to to bring more women to to be part and to be um, involved with the direction involved to be um, leaderships and for us is an example because we we have a woman in the in the presidents and I think it, these examples uh, it's a good way to to show that the woman can be there. And we can do uh, together of the the, the, the men and the other members of the family uh, and the young people. Uh, for us, the, uh, we, we have uh, young people in our um, director team. Uh, there was a, a, a producer too. Um, it's a, a son of producer, so um, he was uh, always participate in the process in the cooperative. So I believe that when we can show the, the work of the cooperative and talk with a language that is equal to them, uh, a language that they can understand what is the message and what is the important to, to, to them to be there. Uh, I think we can have more of this experience for us. But um, I believe that in the, to the next generation, <laughs> because I, I believe that this, this, this generation is, uh, they are more conscient and, and I think that the, the, the mind is more open to, to see the people with equality. Uh, I, I really hope that it will be more common to have uh, women and men in the same position and in the, in, in, in a, in a equal number. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. I have a question here uh, from Justine, actually, and she's asking uh, if there is opportunity for exchange learning between co-ops to enable them embracing bringing young people into coffee growing and management. And I wonder if co-ops cooperate in this way and exchange information, or is it seen perhaps as competition? Perfect. Yeah, we are coming slightly towards the end of the thing. So I might just ask Paolo to come in on that, if you don't mind. Paolo, do you mind coming in on that? And then we'll do a wrap up question after that, maybe if that's OK. So Paolo, what, what are your thoughts on that one? Yeah, that's we, we can see a lot of exchange among the cooperatives in the fair trade system. Uh, we have in all the countries national coordinations that the own cooperatives, they organize it by themselves and they build uh, national uh, organisms to represent themselves and they are democratic on this. And all the countries, they have a lot of meetings, a lot of trainings, a lot of exchange of information among them in many, many uh, matters like uh, next generation young farmers, climate change, uh, prices and everything. So they do a lot of meetings, a lot of exchange of information, and sometimes some uh, field visits in some cop. That example, for example, we have a cooperative that has a good example of women leadership. So the other ones goes there to see how are they working, how are they structured. Another is with young people. Another is with specialty coffee. Other is with organic coffee. So. We have a lot of this exchange among the fair trade cooperatives in the whole world because mm. all of them are organized uh, to to be stronger. So fantastic! Great. Right. Okay. So, oh, is it all right, Ipada? If we finish off with the last question, absolutely. Uh, I, I have a question. Would it be possible to? Um, I wondered as representatives of very young generation of coffee farmers. Um, yesterday I was reading about Lula as your new president, very passionate speech at COP27 in Egypt and how he was pledging that climate change was his first priority. And he was uh, also pledging that deforestation, he wanted to drive it to zero. I wonder 
How does that feel to you as a very young generation of coffee farmers? What do you think um, that that will uh, bring to the coffee industry and to you in particular? Mm, great question. Um, Marina, do you want to come in on that one? Uh, I believe that it's important to, to have these discussions as a politician um, point because um, for us, I, I am repre representing producers. So we have more people in very in different uh, positions, even the, the coffee uh, discussion, even the, the, the supply chain, uh, because we, we, we are from Brazil. We are coffee producers. We, we are, uh, I think, the, the, the bigger in the world. So we have to, to, to have someone that we uh, uh, make stronger our movement, what we, we do. So when we have someone that is uh, add to, to our subject, add to our, um, to our, um, what do you think for why we we really working for for us? I think it's it's a good point. We need to to have um, more support uh, with more projects from the 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 even in in the federal in in the state in the in our uh, city. I think when uh, even uh, when uh, for us when we have more people. To, to give us the voice, to make us stronger, for us would be good, always. And I think it will be a, a good scenario for us because we have um, more possibilities to, to, to have the relationship, relationships with other, other countries around the world. And the agriculture and the, the sustainable point will be, um, I think would be in, in in the in the first uh, in, in the top of the discussions. So for us, I Marina believe that would be good. Fantastic. Well, sadly, we've run out of time. It's been so fascinating, though, to get your insights. Thank you so much again to Marina and Paolo for answering the questions so wonderfully. Um, so yeah, we've asked lots of questions of our panelists today, but we also have one for the audience. Um, so it would be great if you could click your answer to this question below. Further to this session, I have a greater understanding of some of the issues facing affecting the future of coffee for producers. It would be lovely to hear what our attendees think about this. So I think we're probably going to get to see the answers up on the screen as well. Okay, majority, that's great. Fantastic. I'm pleased if it's been useful to those of you who've been able to attend. Um, I think the challenge is to us as a business and to our customers is to be able to help with effectively communicating this onto our consumers. So hopefully an event like this or the one we held earlier is going to be um, a key part of that. But um, we really do need to be to learn to be good storytellers and to pass on the message from people like Paolo and Marina. Um, so it's worth highlighting that we do have some ready-made resources available for you on our Trello board. Um, so we're gonna make a link available to those who've attended this as well. Um, and yeah, we've also got some really nice new video clips and content from another Brazilian cooperative called Ascarive that we also source from uh, with some really nice quotes in there. So just to highlight that they're also gonna be made available to our customers who are joining and listening to this discussion um, and yeah if you have more questions about how Matthew Algae or fair trade works uh, with the next generation of coffee farmers or on climate justice please do get in touch with Matthew Algae and um, it's probably most helpful to do that through your account manager um, but yeah thank you so much again to Marina and Paolo and to others who've been able to join the call we really appreciate you engaging with us in our celebrations so thanks so much everyone and we'll end the call here bye now